And hey, welcome back to cloudchurch.org. I'm Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist of Spanish and English speaking people. There's a lot of people that, that get messed up in the Bible because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us that we need to rightly divide the word of truth. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, rightly dividing is something that a Christian should do. Now, unfortunately, there's some Christians that don't do that. I was raised as a Baptist, and sometimes my mom took me to the Pentecostal churches, and so I've been in all different denominations, and thank God I got saved. I mean, at 18 years old, I got saved. I got out of the Pentecostals. I became a, a Baptist, an independent Baptist, and I went to many different independent Baptist churches. And sadly, there's a lot of Baptists that don't believe in dispensations. And you cannot understand the Bible without understanding dispensations. If you get a chance, go to cloudchurch.org, past sermons, and one of them is on dispensations, and it shows you how to rightly divide and see the different time periods of the Bible. Because clearly, in Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, um, <clears throat> God who in sundry times and in diverse manners, that means God in different times and different ways worked with different people. So you've got people who wrongly divide because they don't look at the divisions in the Bible. Well, on the other side, you have those who wrongly divide as well because they over-divide the word of truth. Or maybe you could use the word hyper or ultra. They, they ultra-divide or they, they overly divide the word of truth. So we've got to be in the balance, in the middle. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept. The Bible is like a tightrope. And the Christian is like a tightrope walker. All right, The Bible needs to be in his hands, and he needs to read it and keep his eyes in the Word. If he looks over here at what one, one person says and gets more into what they're teaching, them, he'll fall off the line. And he'll fall onto this side of, well, let's call it liberalism. And he'll fall off on this side and become very liberal and say, well, I don't believe the Bible anymore, I'll do what I want. Or, if he takes his eyes off the Scriptures and looks over on that side to legalism, then he'll say, wow, I'd rather follow what man teaches or what they say. Oh, I have to do what they say. And he'll fall off the line. So the Bible's like a line, line upon line, precept upon precept. We must follow that line and not deviate and fall off into one side, like those who don't believe in dispensations, nor on the other side, those that overly divide the word of truth. So we're to rightly divide, not wrongly divide. Some people don't divide whatsoever. And some overly divide and wrongly divide the word of truth. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you to the book of Acts and tell you first that Acts is a transition book. And this is something that many people don't understand. Acts is a transitional book. And what it is, it's a transition from Jews to Gentiles. And what it is, it's God setting up his church. And his church started with them, but then it was filled more and more with them. And so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to draw out here a map, and we're going to look at the book of Acts, because the book of Acts has five different ways that people got the Holy Spirit of God. Today, there's only one way, and that way is through salvation by the gospel, trust in the gospel. And Ephesians 1.13 says, the moment that you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit of God. So, there's many denominations out there that are very, very, very messed up because they don't rightly divide the word of truth and they don't see, oh, the book of Acts is transitioning from Jews to Gentiles, from water baptism to salvation without water baptism, from trusting in who Jesus is, the Messiah for the Jews, to the preaching of what Jesus did for us, the preaching of Paul for the Gentiles. Now, let me say, there's some people that say that Peter only preached to Jews and Paul only preached to Gentiles. Well, that's not true, and we will see that as we go through the book of Acts. They, pe they preached to either one. But God used Peter more for the Jews, and God used Paul more for the Gentiles. And we're going to look at that. We're going to try to make it plain so that when you read the book of Acts, you understand what it says. Because so many people hang themselves in the book of Acts. They just nitpick. Well, I like this part. Oh, I like this part. I don't. And they don't take the whole thing and reconcile. Now, how come this is different here and this is different here? Why is that different? What, what is the difference? How are we today? 
Are we saved the same as Peter preached? Why is Paul in the Bible? Who is the Apostle Paul? Well, let's look at that. So I want you to take your Bibles and get the book of Acts with me. And what we're going to do, we're going to start over here when Jesus died. And we're going to look at what was teached, or taught, excuse me, in the book of Acts. And we'll see, hey, so this is how God set it up. Because the church age in which we live today is kind of a parenthetical thing in which God was going to do something one way, but ended up doing it a different way, because it all depended on whether or not the Jews accepted their Messiah. You see, Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh, but he was also the Messiah of Israel. Now, before Jesus, there was John the Baptist. And one thing you need to realize that in the book of Acts, we see uh, the people of Israel rejecting their Messiah three times. They rejected God the Father when they rejected John the Baptist. Do you remember John the Baptist show, showed up and he was baptizing water and the Pharisees came out and said, we don't want that. So they rejected God the Father because God the Father sent John the Baptist to point people to Jesus Christ and to say, hey, Jesus is the Messiah. Now, the second time they rejected uh, God was when they rejected Jesus. They rejected Jesus Christ. So they rejected the Jewish nation as a whole, the Jewish leaders, rejected God the Father through John's baptism. They rejected God the Son through Jesus when they crucified Jesus, offered him on the cross. And then out here, and I don't even know if I'll have room to, to put it because I've got a lot to write, they rejected the Holy Spirit. And they rejected the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 7 through the preaching of Stephen. And we're going to look at that also today as well. I hope that, I'm not going to try to make this a long video. I'm trying to make this a, a brief explanation of the transitional book of Acts. And boy, is it complicated. But it's not that hard to understand if you just read it. So the Jews as a whole rejected God the Father when John came preaching. The Jewish nation as a whole rejected Jesus because they offered him up to be crucified. And those Jewish religious leaders rejected the Holy Spirit when they stoned Stephen. So strike three, they say. Three strikes and you're out. And that's why in the book of Acts you start to see a change from the Jewish Jews to the Gentiles. And that's why in Romans chapter 11 we find that God said he cut off the Jews, but that someday he will go back to them. And we're living in a very amazing time in history when God's about to go back to the Jewish nation and deal with them, and the church is going to be brought out at the rapture. So let's start in the book of Acts, and let's just look at what was preached by different people and why they said what they said. So let's start with Acts chapter 2. All right, when, when the church started, the main guy going around preaching was Peter. And the message that Peter had was in Acts 2.38. Now who was he preaching to? You must remember he was preaching to Jews. So Acts 2.38 is a Jew, Peter, preaching to Jews. Now let's look at that. And I, I say that because there are people out there who claim to be Christians who believe you must be water baptized to be saved. And they believe water baptism is what forgives your sins. I'm sorry, that is a heresy. That is not what the Bible teaches. That's what they had to do. But we, who are Gentiles out here, we're saved by faith alone without water baptism. That's the transition. So in Acts chapter 2, look at what it says here in verse, oh, let's start in verse um, 22. Verse 22, Peter stands up and starts preaching. Now, early part of this chapter 2, they're preaching to Jews and they're speaking in tongues. And people from all over the world that were Jews came to Jerusalem. So it was a Jew, the Jewish disciples, preaching to Jews. In verse 22, Peter says, You men of Israel, hear these words. So Peter, a Jew, is preaching to Jews. Look at verse um, 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. So who is he talking to? To the house of Israel. Now, all through this chapter, you cannot deny that Peter is preaching only to Jews. And now look at verse 37. Now when they, who was that? The Jews that were in the place, heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do 
Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this was repent, be baptized in water. Water baptism. Let me write that down there. Water baptism. So repent and be baptized in water. Well, that's what old, this guy over here, that's what old John preached. Repent and be baptized in water. So he's preaching about the same thing as John. Now, as we continue in the book of Acts, we see that water baptism is no longer a part of salvation, but it was here. Why? Because it's to Jews. And the Jews had to be baptized in water. It had to do with the ceremonial washing. But it also had to do with them identifying with their Messiah. All right, so we go back to the book of Acts. And like I said, I want to go through here quickly. But I also want to show the different changings of things that were preached. So Peter preached, you have to be baptized in water in 238. Okay? Now let's go to chapter 3 and verse 13. Acts chapter 3 and verse 13. Again, Peter is preaching. Let me write that up here, Acts 3.13. And we're going to see a gigantic change as we progress through here of the things that Peter preached. It's almost like he changed his mind. Well, better stated, God changed his mind. So in Acts chapter 3, verse 13, The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, and God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof ye are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. So notice this. He's preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, what we today know as the gospel. But he says now, faith in the name. Faith in the name. What is the name of Jesus? Well, the name of Jesus is, is actually two words. Jesus. And J means Jehovah. So the word Jesus actually means Jehovah saves. So what is it saying? It's saying that Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. So notice the emphasis of Peter. The emphasis of Peter was water in verse in chapter 2, verse 38. Now the emphasis of Peter is the name of Jesus. So the emphasis is on who Jesus is. It's trusting that he is the Messiah of Israel. Jew to Jews, all about the Messiah. All about trusting who he is for salvation. That was the message to the Jews. He would mention the death, burial, and resurrection, but almost as a murder indictment. You, this is the Jesus that you killed. This Jesus that you did, did such and such. But now, believe in his name. But now, get baptized in water. Now, let's continue, because there is a transition. Let's look at the transition. Chapter 4, and verse 10 through 12. So chapter 4, and verse 10 through 12, and what do we see here? Be it known unto you all that the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him did this man stand here before you, whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Look at that. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. So once again, the emphasis is on the name. He mentions the death, burial, and resurrection, but the name. And he says you've got to be saved through this name. So these Jews, right after Jesus, they got saved. Just like we who are saved today are Gentiles. But they weren't saved the same way that we were. These people got the Holy Spirit by water baptism. These people believed in the name. So we're seeing a transition, a changing of the message from what was preached in Acts 2.38 to something different. And we're going to see it continues to change until God sets it straight. This is the way to be saved for us today. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. And let's look at uh, verse 30 and 31. Here we see the message. Acts 30 and 31. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hung on the tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, and for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So look, he's starting to preach more on what Jesus did than who Jesus did. And for us today, salvation is by trusting what Jesus did. What did he do? What he did was what we call the gospel. And through Paul, we will see 
that it's all about what Jesus did because that's what the gospel is. So it's a change, it's a turning. The book of Acts is to change from trusting who Jesus was, the Messiah of the Jews, to Gentiles, what Jesus did, he died for their sins, was buried and rose again. So I've got a video on uh, cloudchurch.org. Go to past sermons and you can look up the video, the difference between the who and the what of salvation. Because in, in the book of Acts, when it started, the emphasis is all about who Jesus was. But for us to be the saved today, we must trust what Jesus did. Sure, we need to know who Jesus was. Sure, we need to believe he was the Messiah. But the fact that we believe that Jesus was the Messiah for the Jews doesn't save us. We are saved by trusting what he did for us in our place when he died for his sins, or our sins, was buried and rose again. So let's step ahead just a minute, and let's go to 752. Okay? So we're seeing the transition, and everything we've seen here, all this, is Peter preaching. And look at what the emphasis is all about. The emphasis is all on the name of Jesus, and the emphasis over here is all about the water baptism. Well, up shows Stephen in Acts chapter 7 and verse 52. And he says, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have now been betrayers and murderers? And as he's going through and he's preaching, all this, chapter 7, is Stephen preaching, and he's telling them, you guys, you killed him, but he rose again. So it's like he's mentioning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's starting to change to be more about the death, burial, and resurrection than about the water baptism. As a matter of fact, Stephen never got to say, now get baptized in water. They stoned him. But you know what we see? Something quite interesting. The Bible says Jesus Christ was standing there in chapter 7 on the right hand of God. See, Jesus had a throne. And the Bible says in other places that he was sitting on the right hand of God, but Jesus Christ must have stood up. Why did Jesus Christ stand up? Because the Jews, had they accepted the preaching of Stephen right here, Jesus Christ probably would have come back and set up his kingdom. But because, remember when I told you back here, the third time the Jews rejected Jesus Christ? He sat back down on his throne. So now, God began to go to Gentiles. That was like the nail in the coffin for the Jewish nation. The leaders would no longer hear of Jesus. Now God would go not to a nation, but to individuals. So what happened? Are you starting to see the transition in the book of Acts? Well, chapter 8, verse 32 through 38. So we come over here to Acts chapter 8, 32 to 38, and guess what we find? We find a guy named Philip. H-I-L-L-I. Philip. And we find somebody called the Ethiopian eunuch. And this Ethiopian eunuch was a Gentile. He was a black dude. Excuse me, colored man. Now, he, what did he hear? He was reading through the book, and you can read this passage, and it says, a lamb to the slaughter. It was reading about Jesus Christ as a lamb. That's the first time that someone started mentioning the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. That's the first time in the book of Acts we hear about a blood atonement. You see, when Acts first started and they went out preaching, they were preaching about water, a liquid. And they thought that's the way you got saved. Well, here we find out that the liquid that saves is the blood. It's a blood atonement. It's all about the lamb led to the slaughter, and we can only be forgiven through the blood of a lamb. So it's interesting that this is the first time that we see a mentioning of a lamb led to the slaughter, which of course refers to a blood atonement. So notice, Peter, Stephen, Philip. Each one of them seems to be preaching a little bit differently, but they all keep mentioning it's about Jesus who died. You killed him. You slew him. You're murderers. They were preaching the murder indictment that they killed their Messiah. But notice the emphasis went from water to the name to the Lamb, to the blood atonement. The emphasis began to change from trusting in something you do to trusting solely upon what Jesus Christ did. But still, look what he Stephen said to him. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And then uh, verse 37, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart that thou mayest, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So notice, he didn't say, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. So it still kind of ties in with that name. 
All right, now let's look at someone else. After Philip shows up, after chapter 9, we have chap or excuse me, chapter 8, we have chapter 9, which is a very, and I mean very, important chapter in the Bible. Because this right here is the conversion of the Apostle Paul. That whole chapter is about a guy named Paul and how he got saved. Why is that so important? Because when the Jewish nation as a whole rejected Jesus, God in His infinite wisdom had a plan that He was going to save the whole world and He was going to send a guy named Paul to go preach the gospel. And in Paul, Romans 11, 13, says He's the apostle to the Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And so guess what? You need to come through the preaching of Paul. So many denominations err because they don't understand the Bible. They err and they try to follow Peter. And they don't understand, Peter, that was all for Jews. If you want to be saved today, it's through Paul and his teachings. Now let's watch this. This is important. Because some people believe that the church started with Paul. And Paul was the first one in the body of Christ. And they teach that. And they further teach that Peter continued his ministry only to Jews and never went to Gentiles, and Paul only went to Gentiles and never went to Jews. Nothing could be further from the truth. Because Peter, in Acts chapter 10 and 11, went to Gentiles. Cornelius. And look at the message that he preached to Gentiles. Do you see how the change starts to change to Gentiles? begins, this begins, or actually, eight was a, was a Jewish proselyte, so you could argue that the Ethiopian eunuch was Jewish, but he was actually a, born a Gentile. And then Saul is saved, the apostle to the Gentiles, and then God says, Peter, go to these Gentiles over there. And so Acts, chapter 10, I believe I want around chapter, verse 44, yeah, yeah, Acts chapter 10, look at verse 39, 40, Jesus slew, hang on a tree, raised again the third day. That sounds like the gospel. Verse 23, To him give all the prophets witness, and through his name whosoever believeth in him shall have received a mission of sins. And look what happened. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. So they believed. As soon as they believed. Look at that. And of all which believed. So as soon as these Gentiles were, were believed, they received the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit by faith. Now look how different that is from Acts 2.38. He said, Repent and be baptized, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Over here, they didn't get baptized in water, and they received the Holy Ghost. How? By faith, by believing. So when those Gentiles believed the gospel, what Jesus did, they got the Holy Spirit. Back here, they got the Holy Spirit by water baptism. See how different that is? So why do people try to preach this for us today? That's to Jews. This over here is to Gentiles. So we see the beginning of the Gentiles. And uh, that was in chapter 10. And, oh, well, it was, what, 41 through 44, something like that. 41 through 44. Let me make sure that's right. So do you see the transition? It starts to change the message from being baptized in water and trusting in the name to slowly just trusting in what Jesus Christ did and getting the Holy Spirit through water baptism to getting the Holy Spirit through believing in what Jesus did, the finished work of Christ. So, uh, 40, actually verse 39 through, through 44. All right, so then what happens? Well, the next thing we see, and I'll kind of skip ahead to save time, is chapter 13. Chapter 13 of Acts, guess what we find? We find Paul being ordained by the church and sent out as a missionary. So Paul was ordained. Well, see, in between 9 and 13, Paul got saved. And we understand that, according to the Bible, uh, Paul went out on his own for a little while in Arabia. And the Bible teaches that God revealed some things unto Paul. And God said, God, uh, Paul says that God revealed unto him the gospel. Well, what is the gospel? We need to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and read verses 1 through 4. And there we find the gospel has five points, and the gospel is Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Well, guess what? They were all mentioning that. 
They were preaching that. Peter and the early apostles were preaching Christ died, was buried, and rose again. So whether they knew it or not, they were preaching the gospel. But they were adding to it. But you've got to be baptized in water. Oh, but you've got to do something else besides that. Yes, he died, but now you do this. So notice how over here, the emphasis was on what you do. And over here, the emphasis is on what Christ did for you. Well, that's a great, great difference to understand. Because when it started here, it was doing something. The emphasis was, got to be baptized. And over here, it's you've got to trust what Jesus did. It's not what you do, being baptized in water. It's trusting what you did, or he did. And look, you've got the Holy Spirit when you believe, not when you were baptized. That's the transition in the book of Acts. It's a gigantic transition, but it's there. Now, I want you to look at chapter 13. In Acts 13, look at what is added that wasn't preached by these folks. So then Paul stood up, we're in 13, 16, beckoning with his hand, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. So here he is preaching to Jews in Acts chapter 13. In Acts chapter 13, verse 30, But God raised him from the dead. Well, there's the resurrection. The death, burial, and resurrection, he begins to preach. Verse 26, Men and brethren. So he's preaching to Jews. Verse 20, 28, And though thou found no cause of death in him, yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. Death. And you laid him in a sepulcher. 29, Burial. God raised him from the dead. 30, Resurrection. He's preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 33, And he hath raised up Jesus again. There's the resurrection. Now look at what he says in verse 38 through 40. Acts 13, 38 through 40. Look at what Paul says that weren't, wasn't said back here. But be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Look how different that is from what Paul said, or Peter said. Peter said, this man is preached unto you uh, as the Messiah, and I preach unto you water baptism for forgiveness of sins. You've got to be baptized in water to have your sins remitted, to have your sins washed away. But Paul says, no, through this man, through Christ, is preached the forgiveness of sins. And verse 39, and by him all believe and are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. You are not saved by the law. You are not saved by doing something. You're not saved by water baptism. Paul said, I preach unto you Jesus Christ, and you're saved by what he did for you. It's all about what Jesus did, the gospel, not what you do. It's not just who he is anymore. It's not preaching death, burial, and resurrection as a murder indictment. Now believe he's the Messiah. It's believe that what he did was sufficient to save you and justify you from all sins and to forgive your sins because it's all what Jesus did for you. There's a transition from Jews. Well, he began preaching to Jews. Paul, without a doubt, started his ministry preaching to Jews. Peter, without a doubt, started his ministry to Jews. And guess what? God also sent him to some Gentiles over here in chapter 10. Cornelius. So no one who preaches that Paul only went to Gentiles and Peter only went to Jews is correct. They went to both. But there is a transition and we see. Now some people erroneously say, but Peter only preached a certain gospel to Jews and continued preaching that gospel to Jews, and Paul preached a different gospel to the Gentiles. And they continued preaching this to Jews, and he prayed, no, here's what the Bible teaches, and we're going to look at this. Paul straightened out Peter on the gospel. That's what I believe. I believe Peter got straightened out by Paul to preach the same thing and get on the same page. And I can, I can prove that to you. Let's go to chapter 15 now. In chapter 15, Paul comes back from his missionary journey. And on, in chapter 15, there's a question that arises because some people are going around and saying, Hey, it's the law that saves, right? Don't we just believe Jesus is the Messiah but continue in the law? And the early church met to find out, hey, what do we do? And guess who they invited? They invited Paul. Because God revealed unto Paul, it's trusting the gospel. It's trusting what Jesus did. No more is it water baptism that saves. Now it's trusting Jesus Christ, finished work for salvation. So verse 1, And certain men came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So they begin to teach another gospel and say, It's the, it's the law that saves you. 
When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up unto Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, okay, the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the converse, uh, converse version of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto the brethren. So they all came together in the early church, and here's what happened. When they all came together, all right, picture this. Peter is sitting there. Paul is sitting there. The early apostles are sitting there. And who's the first one to get up and speak? Peter. As you read through the Gospels, as you read through the Bible, it sounds like Peter is the first one to speak up. And so often he's wrong. But here, he's right. Look what he says. And the elders came together for to consider this matter, verse 6, verse 7, And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how the, a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So Peter says, I'm the first one that started preaching to Gentiles. Hmm, interesting. And look what he says in verse 8. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bare them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Well, what's the difference? God gave the Holy Ghost to these apostles through water baptism, and God gave to the Gentiles the Holy Ghost, not through water baptism, but through faith. There is a difference, and all of your churches that preach water baptism for salvation are wrong, because that's only to Jews, and that's not for us today. Continue. In verse 11, 10, and Peter is speaking, remember this, Now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? I love that. Peter says, why are you trying to put them under the law? Because we can't bear that. We can't do that. No one can be under the law. It's impossible to follow the law. Only Jesus Christ kept the law. Now look at the confession of Peter in verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. So you know what? Peter stood up. And I guess you could say that Peter is a grace believer. Because Peter stands up and says, But we believe that grace through faith, they shall be saved even as we. So Peter says salvation is grace through faith alone. Plus nothing, minus nothing. No water baptism necessary for salvation. It's by faith, by believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Where would he have learned that from? That's what was revealed unto Paul. So Paul comes along and he tells the early church, hey, this is where God told me is salvation. The gospel is this, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's grace through faith without any works of any kind, without any water baptism. It's simply trusting in what Jesus Christ did and you're saved. And Peter says, I believe that. So Peter accepted Paul's gospel. Now, there are some who preach, Peter always preached that gospel till the day he died, and Paul preached this gospel till the day he died. I don't see that. That's not what the Bible teaches. Peter began preaching a gospel. He began mentioning the gospel, but he added to it to Jews. And as Peter went along, Paul straightened him out and said, Now the gospel is death, burial, and resurrection. And Peter said, Yep, you're right. So Peter and Paul and the early church got on the same page and began preaching the same gospel of salvation by trusting what Jesus did. No longer is it just believing who he was. He's the Messiah, and because he's the Messiah, be baptized in water. Now it's trusting in him. What I'm saying is, water baptism does not save you. Water baptism is no longer necessary for salvation. If you teach that water baptism washes your sins away, or you can only be saved if you're baptized in water, you are wrong. You are preaching another gospel. And you'll go to hell wet because you didn't come the way God chose for us today, Gentiles, through the gospel of simply trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, chapter 15, Peter receives Paul's gospel. Now watch what happens. Go back to chapter 15. After Peter says what he said in verse 11, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. Look what happens, verse 12. Then all the more multitude kept silent and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul. So then stood up Paul, and Paul began to speak. So guess what? It's all about Paul till the end of the verse, end of the, end of the book. So Paul is the one that's out preaching this gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and that's the gospel for us today. And so anyone who is after this time is still going to be under the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 
And that's why it's so important to understand the book of Acts. How are you saved? It's through trusting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's trusting the blood atonement, because that's what the death, burial, and resurrection is. It's the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. So, faith in the blood. Faith in the blood is the gospel today. What was it back here? I guess it was faith in water. Faith in water and faith in the Messiah. And had they all accepted Jesus, this is with a cutoff point. Had they all accepted Jesus and had they uh, been able to convince the Pharisees to accept Jesus, Jesus would have come back right there. But he didn't because they rejected him. So Jesus said, all right, now all the emphasis is on me, the blood atonement. Now all the emphasis is on what, what I did. It's not just who I am that you must believe in. It's not just trusting in my name. You must believe what I've done will take you to heaven. So that's the book of Acts in a nutshell. And it's so interesting and so important. Why is it important? Because it shows us that the early church started to Jews. So the early church was two Jews. And those Jews got the Holy Spirit just like today. We get the Holy Spirit the moment we're saved. But they got it differently. They got it through water baptism. How do we get their Holy Spirit? Through believing. So those Jews believed in who Jesus was and got baptized in water, got the Holy Spirit. And they still had an opportunity for Jesus to come back, but he didn't. What happened? It changed. It was a trans... A trans what's the word I'm looking for? I guess the word is transition. Uh, it was a change from this to Jews to Gentiles. God revealed unto Paul. That's why Paul is so important. Paul, God revealed many things to Paul. I'm going to preach a message one day about the, the things that God revealed unto Paul. But Romans 11.13 tells us Paul is our apostle for today. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. And so if you're a Jew today, you still have to come through Paul. And Paul straightened out the early apostles. And they settled once and for all in Acts chapter 15 the question, Are we saved by the law back here? Are we saved by water, or are we saved by faith alone? And guess what? Even Peter said, it's by faith alone. So the message of grace was brought through Paul. Now why is this important? Well, it's so important because those who don't rightly divide the word of truth don't know this. And what's problem is with many denominations is they nitpick. Oh, I like this part. I like Acts 2.38, so I'm going to teach that. And you ignore the rest of the Bible. So you ignore Paul. You ignore the gospel. You want to trust in your baptism rather than trusting in Christ and his shed blood. You're going to hell. Because unless you come to Jesus Christ through the gospel, you're not saved. Now Paul said, and this is so important, and this is uh, something that I've just got to show you. Let's go to Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. There's so many churches that claim to be Christians that want to follow Peter. Peter, And they want to follow Acts 2.38. And they think that Peter is their apostle and is for them. But Peter was a Jew to Jews. If you're not a Jew, you do not follow Peter. You must follow Paul. Why? Because God revealed unto Paul the gospel. Now watch this. Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Well, Paul took it first to the Jews, and then to the Greek. Everywhere that Paul went in his missionary journeys, he went to the synagogue first, and then to the Gentiles after. It wasn't until toward the end of the book of Acts that he said, From henceforth I will only go to the Gentiles. So Peter went to Jews and Gentiles. He started his ministry to Jews preaching one thing. And then God told him, look what I'm preaching to the Gentiles. And he saw, oh, God is changing things from Jews to Gentiles. And it's no longer trusting in the name and who Jesus is and water baptism. It's trusting in what Jesus did. It's trusting that gospel that God revealed unto Paul. He said to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. Now, Romans 2.16 we looked at Romans 1.16, now let's look at Romans 2.16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my 
gospel. Look at what Paul says. According to my gospel. This is Paul's gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Someday, every person who claims to be a Christian, I say who claims to be, there are a lot of people who claim to be a Christian who aren't even saved, but every person will have to stand before God. And that verse tells us that they're going to be giving account to God and be judged according to this right here. So you think you're trying to get to heaven by your water baptism? Imagine when you die and go to hell. And then at the judgment, God brings you out and you stand before God in the judgment. And he says, why don't you come through the way I said through the gospel of Paul? Because I said I was going to judge you according to his gospel. Whether or not you receive me as your Savior, trusting in my finished work, my death, burial, and resurrection, trusting in my shed blood to save you. Are you trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ? If so, you're saved. That's what the Bible says. But if you're trusting in water baptism, you're going to hell. Because you are not saved by what you do. You're saved by trusting what Jesus Christ did for you. That's the difference. That's the main transition in the book of Acts. That's the change. Because without that transition, we'd still be Jews back here. We'd still be thinking we'd have to be baptized in water. We'd still be taking the message to Jews only. But Jesus Christ didn't just die for Jews. He died for everyone. And God said, now this is the way to be saved. Back there, that was to Jews. But now to the whole world, it's through Paul and his gospel. That's the teaching of the book of Acts, my friends. Transition book. Some people say that's too complicated. No, it's not. It's easy. You just read the Bible and see, okay, this was this. Now this is this. So there's a change took place. Rightly divide. A lot of people don't like to believe in dispensation, so they don't divide it at all. A lot of them are so shallow, they don't read the Bible, and so they only go two chapters, and then they choose to believe that, instead of to see how God changed everything, and how God used different ministers. God started out with Peter. Then God said, okay, the, the Jews are rejecting me, so I'll go to Stephen. And he says, now I'm going to bring in Philip. And now I'll go back to Peter and show Peter. Now look, it's all about going to winning the Gentiles. And then God said, now look, now it's Paul, and the whole rest of it is Paul. So Acts 13 through 28, all that's, what would that be, 28 minus 13? So 15 chapters are all about Paul over here. How many chapters are about Peter? Well, let's see, 1 through one through 7, that's 7 chapters. And then he's got 10 and 11, so that's two more. So you got, well, that's 9, but let's be generous. Let's say 10. Let's say 10 chapters are devoted to Peter, but 15 are talking about Paul. And I didn't even include his convers conversion over here, so that makes 16. And then over here, 13, so there's 17, there's 17, 18, 19 chapters of the book of Acts that talk about Paul, and only about 10 of which it talks about Peter. So who should we follow? Should we go to the first half of, of Acts and follow it and cut Acts in half and then say, we don't want anything else to do with the rest of Acts? Or should we say, oh, so this is how it started, but this is how it ended up. And so this is the way it was, but this is the way it is now. This is how God chose to save Jews and give them an opportunity for him to come back. But because they rejected him, this is the way to heaven for us today who are Gentiles. That's the only way, my friend, to understand the book of Acts. You either understand it and believe it, or you don't. I hope this has been a good message. I, I try not to go too terribly long. I probably went too fast. So I would encourage you to read through the book of Acts yourself and take careful note of who he's talking to. Let me show you one more thing while it's on my mind. Go to Acts chapter 16 and verse 31. Because over here in Acts 2.38, there was a question. And the Jewish people asked, men and brethren, what should we do? And the answer Paul, Peter gave was, be baptized in water. Well, in Acts chapter 16 and verse 30, there's a question. Almost the same question. But instead of what shall we do, the question was what shall I do to be saved? And in Acts chapter 16 verse 30 and verse 30 and 31, the question is asked to Paul. This question was to Peter. What shall we do? He said be baptized in water. Well that was to Jews. 
And then he changed because he saw that God used Paul and said, now we're going to change to believing in what Jesus did. No more water baptism for salvation. For. Notice I said for salvation. Well, look at what it says in 16, 30, and 31. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is the Philippian jailer, a Gentile, asking Paul, what should I do to be saved? Verse 31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Salvation by believing, by faith, without water baptism. Here, water baptism to receive the Holy Spirit. Here, receive the Holy Spirit without water baptism, by faith. Here, believing, faith alone. Clearly we are in this time period. Clearly it is by grace through faith alone that we're saved. So I appreciate you watching this video. I hope it's been a blessing to you. If you're one of those that's in one of those cult churches that, that only preaches up to here in the Bible, and likes to spend their time over here in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you need to get out. I forgot to mention this. All these books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that are called the Gospels, they're still Old Testament until Jesus dies. Because the Bible says there must be a death of a testator to start the New Testament. So everything Jesus said, everything that Jesus did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, until he died on the cross, and in, chapter, in Matthew, I believe it's chapter 27, that Jesus dies on the cross. So everything before chapter 27... Is Old Testament. So until Jesus actually dies in the Gospels, everything back there is Old Testament. So why do so many people today who claim to be Christians spend all their time reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and trying to get their doctrine out of those books? Our doctrine today is from the books of Paul, Matthew, it's Romans through Philemon. These are the books for the church because it's from our apostle to the Gentiles. Now let me say this. I'm not saying don't read the rest of the Bible. You should read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You should read Revelation. You should read the entire Bible. But when you read it, you must rightly divide. And you must realize, okay, this is how it started. Jesus Christ, a Jew, went to the lost sheep of the house of Israel to Jews. He sent before him a forerunner named John, sent by the Father, with a purpose. And the purpose of John was to baptize, to present or make manifest to Israel the Savior. The Jewish leaders rejected God the Father through the teaching of John. So, God the Father sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Jewish leaders rejected the Son and crucified Him. After He rose again, Jesus used His disciples to preach and point those Jews to the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. And guess what? He gave them lots of chances. Stephen preached, and that was the final nail in the coffin. The Jewish religious leaders said, no, nope, no more. We don't want to hear this anymore. The Bible says they resisted the Holy Ghost. Strike three for the Jewish nation. And what happens? God begins to say, okay, I'm done with these Jews as a nation. Now as an individual they can be saved. But they have to be the same way that I chose to save the Gentiles. Not by believing who I am, but trusting what I did to save them on the cross. I can't make it any plainer. The book of Acts is a transitional book. You either believe that or you don't. You either see it or you don't. The Bible says the book, uh, the Bible is a book that must be spiritually discerned. That means you have to have the Holy Spirit. You will not understand what I've been saying today if you're not saved. That's why being saved is the most important thing. And how do you be saved? You come to Jesus. You trust Him as your Savior. Trust that blood that He shed as sufficient to wash your sins away. It's all about the blood atonement. It's all about what He's done. If you're saved, praise God. If you're not, get saved. And if you are saved, tell people the truth. This does not have to be hard. It's easy to understand. Just remember, it's all about the gospel. It's all about we Gentiles coming to God this way. This is the way the Jews came, but this is how we come today. So thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate it. And come to every week at cloudchurch.org. We have a new sermon in English and Spanish. And also we're going verse by verse through the epistles of Paul in order of when they're written. And we're, we're right now in chapter 2 of Corinthians. So it would be nice if you come with us and learn the Bible verse by verse. So God bless you and have a good day.